Hey guys, how's it going? Um, the other day, I was talking about uh, the new YouTube layouts, and uh, I got a lot of replies concerning that. A lot of them actually went in a way that's completely opposite of mine, in that the channels aren't so bad, but the homepage is just horribly broken, and where you, you just can't get rid of videos you've watched already, and... Uh, uh, the, the new homepage causes people to miss videos uh, from people that they're subscribed to, and uh, that is uh, simply unacceptable because, um, uh, at least if you believe YouTube's marketing department, subscriptions are the lifeblood of YouTube, so to uh, make them so insignificant by making it so easy to miss videos from people you, you're subscribed to, that is just unacceptable. So, um... Just, just, just so you know, I uploaded a banjo video yesterday, and uh, two days ago I uploaded uh, the first, um, the first Pokemon episode since the new layout came into effect. So if you haven't seen these videos, uh, you could always check them out if you're interested. And see, th th this is this is annoying because now you're expected to bookmark all of your subscriptions by hand and check them out manually in case there is something new on those channels. Is that really how they intend for us to do it? Manually with browser bookmarks? Are you shitting me? And uh, another thing that those changes brought was... Uh, it's actually something positive, that though some might view it as negative for reasons I'll explain, is that uh, now it's... They made it a lot more user-friendly to uh, sort out your subscriptions and uh, unsub from channels you're not watching anymore. You can do that uh, in the... Uh, you can do that all at once instead of going to each person's individual channel and clicking the unsubscribe button. And uh, I think that's cost just about every user on YouTube dearly. Um, I don't think I got it so bad, even, even though, uh, I'll admit it, my subscriber count dropped uh, quite a bit in the last few days. It peaked at around... Uh, 9,075, but now it's just been uh, hanging around uh, 9,050. Uh, the, uh, the, by the way, the, uh, the very day where those changes were implemented uh, was my worst day in terms of net changes to the subscriber count. So I, gu I guess this, this, this just goes to show that uh, people that are subscribed to other people don't always watch uh, their videos. Well, of course, it's to be expected because I have like 9,000 subscribers and my videos get um, 1,500, 2,000 views. So, you know, I guess it's convenience, and I'm not going to complain about that. All it's really doing is delaying my 10,000 subscriber special further, if I'm actually able to do it. I really should st I really should uh, get off my lazy bum and actually check out if I can actually do it, instead of alluding to it all the time, and then it turns out that, oh, I can't do it! Okay, but uh, enough about that, we're about to enter Mount Moon. And uh, Silver is waiting for us inside, and he usually leaves with his Sneasel, so I'm going to send my Tyranitar in the lead to uh, hit it with a Stone Edge from the get-go. Of course, I'm probably uh, uh, going to go second, but uh, Tyranitar can take whatever that Sneasel has to, uh, has to throw at me. And right off the bat, you can notice that there is something seriously wrong with Silver. He's nowhere near as much of a jackass as um, as he used to be, and he's able to acknowledge other people being strong, such as the random people in Kanto as well as myself. But uh, we'll come back to that later. We got a fight to attend to here. So, as expected, he leads with Sneasel, so I'm going to see if I can nail him. Um, Stone Edge, Faint Attack, oh well, can deal with that, it's not very effective, and uh, Critical Hit, of course, and Stone Edge misses, of course, still 22 damage, that would mean 11 from a non-critical, I can wall this thing all day if it's, got, if it's the best that it can throw at me, another Faint Attack, oh man, 
ho hopefully Stone Edge connects soon. There we go. I was about to say otherwise uh, this is going to be a long battle. But uh, I guess... Oh, unnecessary critical. Thank you very much. Hax is really flying around here. We got two criticals and a miss already. And, uh, <laughs> and the battle's just begun. Next, Magneton. Well, there's no reason not to, to uh, keep my Tyranitar in play. I'm just going to Earthquake the crap out of this poor sucker. And that's going to be the end of it. And, of course, I'm going first because of my level advantage. Magneton is a bit faster. Actually, it's a bit faster than Magnezone as well. But uh, thanks to my level advantage, it really isn't much of a problem. So, Tyranitar is now up to level 57. Sandstorm Rages, thank you very much. Leftovers, recovery... Ugh, just move on! Typhlosion! Okay, I'm gonna keep Tyranitar in again, I guess. Um, you know what? Level 50, I'm gonna risk it with a Stone Edge, because uh, I lost my stab on Earthquake when I evolved uh, Pupitar into Tyranitar. Flamethrower, not the... ANOTHER CRITICAL?! Wow! But uh, it's... It was still only 36 damage, so I guess it's okay. Ah, uh, well... There we go, as long as it connects, I'm pretty sure it's gonna go down, but... Um, yeah, if, if only I still had that the stab uh, on Earthquake, but I guess I can't have my cake and eat it too. Now, who's next? Gengar! You know what? I have the level advantage, I'm fairly confident in my ability to win a mirror matchup. At this point, it's just, you know, whoever is the fastest wins, and uh, 56 versus 48, yeah, of course I was gonna win this, and... Uh, normally, I wouldn't uh, be that reckless with mirror matchups involving ghosts, but, um, you know, with that kind of level advantage, it's, um, it, it makes things a lot easier to decide. Okay, next up, Alakazam! You know what, I'm gonna keep Gengar in there. I'm confident that I'm faster than Alakazam, even though Alakazam has a higher base speed than Gengar did. Doesn't really matter either way, because you just saw it! I went first again, and another one-hit KO, and another critical hit as well! Oh my god, this is the battle of unnecessary hacks here! Never seen that much hacks. And, uh, flying around in a battle before, and it's completely redundant on top of that. Actually, I've seen a few battles with that much hacks, but, uh, uh that's neither here nor there. Golbat is last. I think I can just kill it with a Thunderbolt, so that's gonna be the end of it if I can manage to kill it. And in retrospect, maybe I should've, um, maybe, maybe I should've switched to Raikou, because I've had Golbat survive on me with one or two HP left before, but... Doesn't really matter because Silver Battle number six is now a thing of the past. Now, what I did in my Crystal LP at this point is that uh, I went straight to Indigo Plateau and did the last fight against him. But uh, this time around, his levels are much higher, so I'm going to wait until the tail end of uh, the post game. That and uh, I am. Um, Oh, okay, I, I figured it too, that Silver couldn't be uh, a completely nice guy, even at this point in the game. So, let's just explore Mount Moon in the meantime. I'm gonna put Gengar in the lead because it's still um, one level behind. And, uh, by the way, I've been talking a lot about Kanto in this game being restored to its former glory compared to Gold, Silver, Crystal, but, um, Mount Moon is one of the rare areas that they, that they nerfed badly in uh, Gold, Silver, Crystal, that they actually kept that way in the game, because, uh, they introduced the square uh, in the middle of Mount Moon, where, uh, where you can see Clefairies dancing on Monday nights and stuff, and, um... Okay, I, I was, was just wondering if there was anything there, and that's uh, where we're headed, even though we're not on a Monday night. I, I'm gonna show this to you, the Clefairies dancing around. Uh, if I do get a chance, they leave a Moonstone behind, so it's definitely worth your while if you want to fill up your Pokedex. 
because uh, I don't think uh, any of the random trainers you can rematch have uh, moonstones to give you. I think other type of stones, like the basic elemental ones, but not moonstones. Anyway, this is uh, the Mount Moon Square, and yeah, Max Revive right there. Not surprised to find anything there. It, 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 it looked rather suspicious. Please don't litter. Put trash where it belongs. Well, that's what I just did. Silver is no longer here. So uh, anyway, we got uh, we got this little shop here, and uh, okay, this little girl tells us about um, the Cliff fairies on Monday night, and we got a few products here that guess not very interesting, especially not at this point of the game. But uh, yeah, they're closed in the evening. There's nothing in the trash can. So uh, this is this right over there is where you can see the Clefairies on Monday night. So I'll be sure to cover this um, whenever I get the chance. So uh, now we can head uh, out of Mount Moon and into Route 4. Now Route 4 is where that point of no return was if you come uh, from the direction of Cerulean. But uh, we're going to explore the rest of the route. Now I don't think... Oh wow! I didn't remember there being any trainers here! Um, I don't think there were any in uh, Red, Blue, and Yellow in its remake, so I'm a bit surprised to find trainers here of all places, but... Oh well! More experience for the taking! I'm not complaining! By the way, a uh, fun little story. Yesterday, I intended on making uh, a video for this LP, and I intended on uh, grabbing a few phone numbers uh, while I could. But, as it turns out, all those phone numbers had a requirement that Sarah B said nothing about, namely, you have to beat Blue. That's right, beating Blue is a hard requirement for any phone number from a Kanto gym leader, except for Janine and Sabrina. I already got Janine, and I'm still not far enough to be... No, I already got Sabrina, and I'm still not far enough to uh, get up to the spot where Janine is, and when uh, she wants to give you her phone number, so I guess we'll take care of that a bit later. And, uh, am I really fighting a level 13 Pidgey in Kanto? Really? Oh, I swear, those Game Freak uh, employees, they got the weirdest idea of humor. But yeah, as I was saying, I couldn't get any of those phone numbers. I was so enraged with that, because I found it out on Bulba Garden and Sarah B didn't say anything about it. I was so enraged that I said, screw it, I don't feel like playing Pokemon anymore, so that's why you got uh, an episode of Banjo-Kazooie yesterday. Um, by the way, uh, some, something very important that a lot of you are going to ask about if I don't talk about it, uh, there's going to be a Victini event. Actually, it's going on right now in uh, America, uh, the, the UK, and Australia as well. Uh, it's not through the Global Link, it's through Mystery Gift Meeting that uh, those among you who... Okay, this is the point of no return I was talking about earlier, so I guess all that's left is this one trainer and this one item. But, um, yeah, even if you don't have a Global Link, you can get that Victini through Mystery Gift uh, in, the, uh, in the main menu of the game. And uh, the Victini has um, V-Create, Searing Shot... Fusion Bolt and Fusion Flare. Now, uh, Fusion Flare isn't all that useful. It's soundly outclassed by a Searing Shot. And as for V-Create, well, I guess it's cool if you want a really powerful move on your Victini. But uh, if you want sheer power on a Fire-type move, uh, you should go to, uh, to uh, towards Darmanite and instead, because even, even though they created a 180 power move, for Victini, Darmanitan's Flare Blitz still ends up being stronger. Yeah, no wonder Victini isn't even overused. <laughs> I remember the freakout when uh, this thing was first data mined when the games came out. Everyone's like, oh my god, whenever Victini gets that move, it's gonna go to Ubers for sure. And, uh, nope, not even close. It's a uh, borderline. No, wait, it's actually underused! I was thinking of a Kyurem, another failure of a Gen 5 Legendary. Um, anyway, I think we are done uh, on Route 4 now, HP up, so I'm gonna head back to Pewter City for now, and uh, next time on uh, Pokemon Soul Silver, we're gonna head south of Pewter City, 
and we are going to head to the Viridian Forest, which is a new area that was added to um, Hard Gold Soul Silver that wasn't there in um, in Gold Silver Crystal. Well, it was there. It was just part of Route Two and really, really nerfed. So I'll see you guys next time.